Hallelujah. Are you better? Are you better or butter? <laughs> better and butter, right? God is good all the time, isn't he? Hallelujah. He's always ready to do something with each and every one of us if we're just willing to cooperate. Amen? Everything is associated with conditions. Conditions. We're always in that area of conditions. You know, one of the things about praise and worship, which is, you know, we don't even realize that we bring an activation. See, it's our responsibility to activate. We're to activate everything associated with the kingdom. If you're not willing to activate, then you'll be useless. Amen. We got to activate our faith. We got to activate hope. It's our responsibility to activate. So in praise and worship, we're really actually activating and driving out. See, wherever you go, no matter where you're at, it's our responsibility to drive out everything that would come against the will of God. Everything. Everywhere I travel, everywhere I go, and I don't care whose house it is, wherever I'm going to lay my head, I go in there and I lay my hands on that bed or whatever and break that curse off. I don't know who's been there. I don't know what it's been used for, and I don't care, and I don't know where it came from. Wherever you lay your head, you should break the curse off. Command anything associated with it to loose and leave and go to the pit. Cleanse it with the blood. Why? Because you are creating an atmosphere for his presence. It's our responsibility to create an atmosphere for him to come into. So we want to create an atmosphere for him to be in our minds, in our hearts. We want to create an atmosphere of wherever we go and whatever we do. But it's our responsibility to activate these things. Amen? So many times people don't even realize that it's your responsibility to activate your authority. It's your responsibility to activate the dominion God has given me and you. That's what power is. Power is authority and dominion. Does everybody get it? It's what? Authority and dominion. Whose responsibility is to activate it? Ours. So to keep it activated, there's in times when, listen, the, we live in a world that's messed up. Amen? You're going to be hard-pressed and attacked all the time. That's why it's good to have the worship music going. Even when I leave my home, I leave it for my animals. Amen. I leave it so that there's an atmosphere in my home. I want praise and worship going on. Driving out the mind. See, because darkness hates light. Amen. So in that, we want to constantly, it's our responsibility to make room for God. So many people are waiting on God, and he's waiting on you to create an atmosphere for him. He's waiting on you to create a place for him, to prepare a place for him. So he comes. No matter what you're waiting for, you're waiting for a blessing, healing. If you're waiting for uh, an answer, for whatever it may be, you must create, by activation, a place for him to commune, for him to come, and for him to answer whatever it is you're going through. That's why we go through it. Amen? Too many people become stagnant. They're waiting on God. You know what a waiter does? Serves. That's waiting. Serves while they're waiting. We're keeping things activated. We're keeping our faith, our hope, and everything. We're keeping his presence activated. That's why no matter where you are, you throw out a hallelujah. You know, some of you may pass out next to you, but it's okay. Believe me, when you go in those stores and that music starts playing, oh, God, I'm hallelujah. I'm like crazy. Hallelujah. I went golfing with my brother one time. He had a friend. I might have told you the story. And every time he swung the rack, uh, every time he swung the golf club and missed, he would release something called, he'd go, Jesus Christ. But it was in a wrong way. And I would go, hallelujah. I was, I see, I was driving out everything he was bringing in. It didn't help my playing at all. But anyways. 
in this, we got to look at the area to where we, it's our responsibility to activate. That's what God gave me and you. That's what's called power to activate. Activate your authority. Revelation chapter 1. God, it's hot in here. Are you hot? Whew. It's cooking. <laughs> Had a girl. Just don't blow my pages off. <laughs> Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. And I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. What you see, write in the book and send it to the seven churches, which are in Asia, Ephesus, Sam uh, Samaria, Pergamos, uh, Thyrotyra, Sardius, Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and hair were white like snow, or were like white like snow, and his eyes like what? Flames of fire. That's what Jesus looks like now, okay? He doesn't look like what we saw him here on the earth. People got pictures of Jesus. That's cool, you know, on the earth, but this is what he looks like now. And verse, six, and, and verse 15, and his feet were like fine brass, as is, if refined in fire, and his voice was as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell <laughs> at his feet as what? Dead. Wow. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the what? The what? The keys of hell, Hades, and of what? Death. Write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. For the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand are the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angel, the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw are the seven churches. Jesus was holding the keys of authority and dominion of hell. Hades, which is a, pr a, a, a prison of, for the wicked, amen, and for the unjust. And death, he was holding the keys of death physically and spiritually, which is separation. Does everybody understand that? So I want you to look at the area. Why? Because he defeated the powers of darkness. He defeated Satan. Because everything was lost in the garden. All dominion, all authority was lost to mankind. So Jesus had to come and restore it. And so he went to hell. He kicked butt, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from the powers of darkness, from Satan, which is adversary. And he has said, I hold the keys, and I will give to the keys whomever I choose. Whoever I what? Choose. For many are called, but not many are chosen. Matthew 16. I want you to understand that keys do many things. Amen? A key locks, unlocks. 
opens, closes, right? <clears throat> In Matthew 16, verse 13, Matthew 16, verse 13. And when Jesus came into this region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But he said to them, But who do, I, who do you say that I am? Again, here's the foundation of everything, your relationship. Your relationship. You don't, if you don't know him, you're going to do things you shouldn't do. Amen? If you, if you know him, you're going to carry a reverence, honor, and respect to him in everything you do. If you don't know him. See, some people know him in the afternoon, but not in the afternoon, in the morning. Yeah, I know him, and then they lose sight of who he is. See, to know him is to know him all the time. To know him when? All the time. All the time. Let's go a little further. And he said to them, but who do, you, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In other words, you are the way, the truth, the life. You are the power. You are the anointing. You're the only one out of here. You're the only way out of here. And you're the one who holds the keys of all authority and dominion. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did, has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church on the revelation of the power of Christ Jesus. And the gates of hell will what? Not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, did he do this yet? Did they receive them, this power yet? No. Jesus was speaking things in that he had to fulfill. He was doing what? Speaking things, calling those things that are not as though they are. That's called prophetic power of the word. See, you can't go by how you feel. Amen? You decree what he says, not how you feel. And he says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. These are dimensional keys. They reach every dimension. Does everybody understand that? These are keys of authority. They're act it's our responsibility to use these keys. They are activation. We activate the keys. You, when, listen, when somebody gives you a key, if you put it in your pocket, is that any good? No. Do you ever notice when you go to big buildings or whatever, the, usually the maintenance person's got all these keys on the side? Amen? He's got a lot of authority. He's got access to all kinds of things because responsibility has been given to him. These two keys he's talking about and these keys that God has given me and you are vitally important. They are keys of dominion and they are keys of authority. And if they are not activated... The enemy will always mislead you. He'll trick you. He'll deceive you. Everything is based, again, on your relationship and trust. Can God trust someone to drive his cars? <laughs> Amen? If you got a bad record. <laughs> Remember, everything is earned. You're not going to give your, cars, your keys to a four-year-old kid, are you? Or somebody just came out of jail from reckless driving and DUI. Hi, here. Go ahead. No way, homie. Again, this is an area. Keys of the kingdom of God are to use against the kingdom of evil. That's Satan, our adversary. We are to activate. What do these keys do? They restrain, don't they? You can restrain the powers of darkness with these keys. You can unlock the treasures of heaven. You can shut and open doors. These keys are to be activated by each and every one of us. They lock, they unlock, they turn on, they turn off. They're like switches. 
Amen? You can go. You can stop. We are joint heirs. We hold the keys of these dimensional keys of activation, which can open and shut doors and of entry and exit. Again, keys are like switches that turn it on and off. Amen? But everything is based on your relationship. That is the foundation of operation, your relationship with him. Because if you don't know him, you don't know who you really are. Again, if there's that relationship that's in the spirit. Is everybody okay? Luke 10. Activating your authority is today's title, just in case. Activating your authority. You activate your authority to by singing. Amen. You're activating something. Why? Wow, you're sowing. What does the word say? When a when a spirit of heaviness and so put on a spirit of praise, it re, it moves it away. But if you're not going to activate it, you're going to get oppressed. Listen, as soon as I start feeling funky, you know, you have to start fighting. You have to start battling. Don't Google it what it is. Who cares? I'm going to Google. Let me find out what's attacking me. Forget it. Just start getting rid of it. Create an atmosphere. Activate the keys. Activate your authority and dominion. By the time you Google it, you're already sick. And then you just confirm what you got. And then you agree what Google says instead of what God said. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 17, Luke 10. It said that Jesus sent out 70, and he said, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Can a demon carry sickness? Yeah. How about oppression? How about addiction? These are spirits. People are still looking at the physical when these are spirits. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Why? Because he disarmed them. But you got to understand something. Did it happen yet? No, Jesus was prophetically speaking things that hadn't happened yet. How many of y'all know that your emotions will keep you right in the same place all the time? Oh, man, this is just how it is. Man. No, it isn't. This is what God dealt me. No, he didn't. Hallelujah. And I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to what? Trample on the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that these demons or spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. See, for Jesus, this was like nothing. What's the problem? He said, oh, man, this is like, no, don't rejoice that you have dominion. You don't have to rejoice. That's nothing. I give the, I'm going to pay the price for all of these things. But rejoice that your name is written so that you have access eternally with me. Amen? See, but the problem is, is if people don't take dominion, that's why he said many people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they never knew how to fight. Man, we got to minister to a girl in the parking lot, and as I was sharing some stuff with her, she kept saying, I never knew that. Her question, and she had a good question, can I pray in my mind, basically, and have victory? And I said, no. God hears your prayers in your mind, but you're not going to fight the devil in your mind. You must speak it. She said, nobody ever told me that. And I gave her a booklet. I said, here you are. Now you're armed. Speak it. And she was just so joyful and, and, and grateful, hugged me. She had tears in her eyes. And I mean, this girl just walked up to us. 
see, there are some of those out there that are hungry and thirsty. We just have to be available. Sometimes you have to suffer to get in position, though. I'll tell you that. Hallelujah. What did Jesus do? He disarmed Satan's authority and dominion and returned it to the body of believers. Believers are those that follow. Not someone that just says, except Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 68. Psalm 68. So what does power mean? It means authority and dominion. Amen? Take your authority and dominion. Psalm 68, verse 32. Psalm 68, verse 32. Let's say it. Sing. Everyone say sing. To who? To God. You kingdoms of the earth. Oh, sing praises to the Lord. Why? Is that going to change the atmosphere? Yeah. To him who rides on the heavens of heavens, which were of old. Indeed, he sends out his voice, a mighty voice. He sends out his what? Voice. Ascribe strength, strength to God. His excellence is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. O oh God, you are more awesome than your holy places. The God of Israel is he who does what? Gives strength and power to his people. What is power again? Authority and dominion. Blessed be God. How does it come? You must make connection. How do you make connection? Praise and worship. Sing, connect. Why? Because we're connected breath to breath. The Spirit of God is known as the breath of God. Now we're connecting breath to breath. Second Peter chapter 1. 2 Pete, chapter 1, activating your authority. Second Pete, chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied in the what? Knowledge. Knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now listen, knowledge is just not written. Do you ever notice that when you hang around with someone, you begin to learn more about them? You're gaining knowledge. In fact, you can give knowledge to them and they can give knowledge to you, can't they? See, when the more you hang around with the Lord, the more knowledge you're going to get. Amen? So it's not just about reading something all the time. It's about who, hanging around with him, inviting him. He's going to show you things. He's going to bring you revelations. He's going to speak to you. His voice has already been sent. His voice did not return. It's still going forward. It's holding up everything. Amen? He said, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge and the knowing of God and of Jesus our Lord and his divine power. Why, the more you know him, the more you know how, how his power and authority. Amen? His authority and dominion, that's power, has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In other words, look, I've given you the power. you got all the authority. I've granted it to you. Activate it. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world, through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge, what? Self-control, in other words, dominion and authority over yourself, your old man. 
through self-control, perseverance, through perseverance, godliness, through godliness, brotherly kindness, and through brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours, if you get this, if this becomes a part of your life, a reality to you, you will never be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge and revelation and fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he or she was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is so powerful. He's saying the divine power, the authority, and dominion is being transferred to me and you by the knowledge or relationship with the Lord. To us becoming partakers and expressors of his divine nature, which is dominion and authority. Over self, the old ways of habits and desires. Worldly demonic attacks and fears, sicknesses, oppression, and sin. Again, everything is based on your foundation of relationship. Everything. You know him, you know you. This is where your identity comes from, knowing him. Not just knowing about him. You can read all the Sports Illustrated and learn all about the world wants to be, imitate all famous players, movie actors, and everything else. We're to be imitating God Almighty. Amen? And you can't do that without His divine power in us and through us. We can't do it at all without Him. But He invites us to participate in everything. There's an invitation always there before us, all the time. Come. That's why He says, come. Come. He's always inviting us to partake of his divine nature with power. And he's saying, don't forget who you are. Come on, keep me connected with you. Keep me activated. Keep me activated in you. That's why we gather together, because our battery begins to run low. We got to get recharged and plugged back in. Amen? Romans 8. Activate your authority. Whose responsibility to activate it? Ours. Hallelujah. In verse Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, the old ways, and sin. To live according to the flesh, the old ways, and sin, the old man. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. That ought to frighten everybody. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you are going to what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are called Sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit within us that we are children of God. He's always saying who you are. He's always reaffirming your identity if you're listening, if you have ears to hear. And if children, then what? Heirs. And heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we would suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Wow. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Do you understand that your trials and tribulations express his glory? They're either going to overtake you if you don't activate your keys. Amen. Activate who you are, taking dominion and authority, or they're going to overtake you. Does everybody get it? 
You're responsible. I'm responsible to activate the power and authority and dominion. Does everybody get it? And everything we do, it's my responsibility. It's your responsibility. Then why do people get taken out? They get lazy, compromise. The enemy throws in that little seed that says, you don't need to do that. It's okay. You don't feel good. You this, you that. What's he do? Every time you hear that voice bring it to you, you know it ain't God. Because the enemy brings that voice to you. Aren't, you. aren't you oppressed? Aren't you sad? Aren't you this? Aren't you that? That's where you must turn around and activate it. No. You know, I remember seeing all those days of the bumper in the front behind the cars. Just say no. Amen. I could never say no. That was the problem. I didn't have any authority. I didn't, wasn't, I didn't know how to activate anything. I just said, yes. It nearly killed me multiple times. Destroyed my family and everything else. Now we can say no. Why? Because we have the activation and the authority and the power by the keys of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Acts chapter 1. Oh, happy days. Glory. Real simple. Acts 1, verse 8. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let's go to verse 4. It's even simpler. <laughs> Acts 1, verse 4. Is everybody there? And being assembled with them, Jesus was with them. He, he did what? Come on, that word command is so vital. Can you imagine Jesus hanging out with them? He's risen from the dead. He hung out for 40 days telling everybody what's going on about the kingdom. But the main thing, because he told them, wait. I want you to wait, 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 wait. I command you to wait. Man, if God shows up and tells you to command you something, you're going to do it. Because you know if you don't, you're history. And that don't make making history. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them. This is where the churches are forgetting. This is where they're letting this go because too many people are leaving churches with no power. No power and dominion. Same addiction over and over. Same stupid stuff over and over and over. No power. Why? Because they're not activating it. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water. People can't go beyond the baptism of water. That's amazing. He said, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not in many days from now. In other words, I'm going to transfer my dominion, my authority to you by my spirit. Only through my spirit. You can do all the feeding and clothing. You can do all the works of outreach. You can bring many souls to Christ, but you ain't going to have the power and authority without me. You won't have dominion. That's why many came to him, right, and said, Lord, Lord, we did this, this, and that. And he said, you practice lawlessness. Why? They were not activating the keys of authority. In verse 8, he says, but you shall receive what? Power. What's power again? Authority and what? Dominion. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit, the breath of God Almighty, His Spirit comes in you. And you will be a witness to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will receive power through the anointing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 9. See, there's too many Christians with no power. In fact, many of them don't even know they, it's available to them. Just like that girl that showed up to, in, in, our, in the parking lot. She said she was a, a Christian, but then she rededicated her life. She goes, I really want to do this right. 
Acts 19. Acts 19, verse 1. This is phenomenal stuff to me. You know, I, I, I never knew about any, anything. I didn't, never read the Bible. But I went to a, a place where the presence of God was at. And when I left that place and I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and He showed up, brought me to the, filled me with the Spirit with power, my life was changed instantly. Life's changed instantly. See, that is when people say, I'd love to have a visitation from the Lord. Well, that's what the baptism is. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is actually a visitation from the Lord. Does everybody get it? And he's filling you. In Acts chapter 19 and verse 1, is everybody there? Let's read it together. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples, is a disciple a believer? Yes. And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? When you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Did you get baptized in the Holy Spirit? And what they say? We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So did they get baptized in the Holy Spirit when they accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? No. No. Was the seed of God in them? Yes. And he said to them, what then were you baptized? And he said, in John's baptism, which is the baptism of water. Okay. And Paul said, John indeed baptized with, uh, for the repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. They got a new language. What? To connect. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you, you can go home and seek it and just ask. There's prayers in that book that say, Lord, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. When people haven't been baptized, I said, you know, go seek it. And, and you know, if you got a $1,000 check in your hand and the bank isn't open, you're going to keep coming back till it opens, right? It's the same thing by receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You go, you go, you go. Look, at it took my wife months to get received, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Drove me crazy. But when she became baptized in the Holy Spirit, her life changed. Now we became equally yoked. <laughs> Why? Because we began to see the same things, same eyes. Scales come off of your eyes. You see spiritually. Everything is different. This is more than just going to church. It's more than just reading the Word of God. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God becomes food to you. You've got to have it then afterwards. Now you're feeding a new creation in you. And the Spirit of God is in you, causing you. Kicking you in the butt saying, come on, move. Get up. Don't just lay there and sleep and shut those cell phones off. Yo, what's with the cell phones over here, homies? What you watching? Good girl. That's what I like to see. The cell phone for good use. Amen? Hallelujah. See, they're using it for good use. A lot of people use it for, you know, the wrong use. I mean, the cell phone is a definitely connection to all kinds of demonic activity. Technology today will wipe out people big time. Ephesians 1. Oh, happy days. Glory. Turn off Google. <laughs> Unless it's releasing music. Let that, the internet serve the kingdom. Don't let it serve you. I mean, you know, don't, 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 don't make it, you become its servant. Amen? Everything is supposed to be submissive under the authority of Jesus Christ. Even the wisdom of the world is supposed to come under the authority of Jesus Christ. Amen?
especially in worship. Man, we should be looking up. Why do people look down? Who are you worshiping? We should be looking up. Wow, we're, we're worshiping the king, not the devil. We're worshiping, he's, we're, we're uplifting him. Amen. Well, this is where we came from, not from down there. I see people worshiping like this. Oh, boy. I got to sing another song. It's a good day to die. Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. In other words, he's connected us. Through what? The Spirit. This is where people don't know that they're connected. They're trying to battle demonic forces, unseen realms, demonic entities in their mind, in their feelings, in their emotions. You're going to lose every time. You'll have no victory. Oh, we're blessed with the, in these places just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to what? Adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. That's identity. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he would gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing. These are also associated with even blessed with the, all the gifts of the Spirit, which are tools. Ephesians 2. Is everybody okay? Activating your authority. Ephesians 2, verse 4. Because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead and trespasses. In other words, we were boneheads out there doing what we ain't supposed to do. Unbelief. Made us alive together with Christ by grace, by his plan you've been saved. And he raised us up together and made us. Everyone say made me. Sit together in heavenly places in him. He connected me. Sat right next to him. Sometimes on his lap. When that childlike little boy comes in his room, he's on his lap. Hi, Dad. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceedingly riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So we are blessed every spiritual blessing. We are seated in heavenly places. That's through the authority and dominion that he took from the enemy so that he could place us in these places. He paid the price for that. And he's releasing everything through his spirit to me and you so that we walk in a life of power, which is authority and dominion over the powers of darkness, over our thoughts, over our emotions, over our sickness, over disease, over fears, over everything. The whole thing is, is people are not activating them. Oh, Jesus, help me. He said, I did. Did you forget? I'm the one who paid the price. Jesus, help me. I did. Now use it. I did not come to bring peace. I came to bring you a what? Sword. Pull it out and use it. Open your mouth. And don't yell help. Use the word. Hallelujah. Psalm 18. I can't say I haven't yelled out help sometimes in emergencies. Yeah. Help. Quick, Lord, help me. Or I'll kill somebody. Proverbs 18. 
Did I say something wrong? Psalms changed. Proverbs. We're in the proverb room. Whew. It's still hot in here. Proverbs 18. Glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it intently. Verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21, what's it say? Death and life are in the what? Power and tongue. So what's in the, what's the power? Dominion and authority. It's where? In the tongue. Wow. That's why people are actually killing themselves by what they say. Cursing themselves by what they say. For those who love it will eat its fruits. Because what you speak is what you eat. Power, dominion, and authority in your tongue. That's how God created us. Psalm 33. Not Proverbs, Psalm. We're going to the right location. Psalm 33. Psalm 33, verse 4. Activating authority, your authority. That's called power. Listen, there's no power. In other words, there's got to be, there's power that powers these lights, right? Until somebody turns on that switch, ain't no power going there. That switch is in your tongue. Verse 4, let's speak it. For the word of the Lord is what? Right, and all his work is done in truth. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Now, wait a minute. Did God write a letter and it manifested, or did he speak it? He spoke it. And all the hosts of them by the what? Breath of his mouth. So everything that was created came out of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap. He lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he did what? He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Wow. So if he needed to speak to get things done, what about me and you? Come on, God Almighty had to speak to get it done. Now what he spoke, he released into me and you now. So now we're carrying not only the breath of God, but his words. But his words come not only through his presence, but through the word of God. Amen? He spoke, and, it is, and he's still speaking through us with a new tongue of power, a new tongue of authority. To activate authority and power and dominion. Boy, before I, I was born again, I was a cussing dude. I used to think of it all the time. I mean, that's all I knew. It was English. But after I got born again and filled with this Holy Spirit, it doesn't come to mind. And n none of that stuff is to be on my, on my lips and my tongue. Because we've been sanctified now. Nothing that we did, he did it. Amen. That's all we're doing is cooperating with him now. So we're cooperating with the spirit. We're feeding ourselves with pure, with holy, with righteous. And the moment we stop feeding ourselves with those things, that's why it says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. We're no longer about good and evil. We're about righteousness. Because that's what pleases him, righteousness and justice. You can have good and evil all day long. But those are not getting in heaven. Those who practice good and evil don't make it home. Only those that practice righteousness. And you can't do it on your own. You must have the power from him to do it. That's why he said, I commanded you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Don't go out without him. 
And then what? Stay filled with the Holy Spirit so you can maintain activity. Is everybody okay? Genesis chapter 1. A couple more scriptures. Genesis 1, verse 26. So God created man, and what did he say in verse 26? Very powerful. And God said, let us make man in our what? Image and likeness, dominion and authority. Let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That's why God told Adam to what? Name the animals. So you can blame Adam for all the goofy names of these animals. So God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then blessed them. And God said to be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. That is dominion. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, you got to understand something. They were not evil then. Animals weren't evil then. They were not corrupted. Everything was different. Adam named all the animals. Amen? Until they fell. Then everything changed. Even the animals became corrupted. Adam and Eve became corrupted. And it's come down uh, ever since. But they had dominion and authority. Even Satan himself had to submit to Adam and Eve. That's why he was in the garden as a serpent. He was a servant to Adam. The, all the fallen angels were servants to Adam. And then the serpent deceived Eve, and she deceived her husband. Nothing had changed in the restoration of authority and dominion what was lost in the Garden of Eden, but now was restored in the Garden of Gethsemane. Does everybody understand? In Luke 22, everything that was lost, amen? Nothing has changed since then until Jesus Luke 22. Before Jesus was whipped, before mankind caused blood to flow from the body of Jesus Christ, God did it himself first. And Luke twenty two thirty nine. Luke twenty two thirty nine. No man was going to be allowed to draw blood from the body of Christ. He was going to shed it first himself. In verse thirty nine, is everybody there? Luke twenty two. So they said, Lord, look here. Am I in the right place? Our two swords, and he said to them, it is enough. Come out. He went to the Mount of Olives, and it was the custom, and the disciples also followed him. And when he came to the place, that place was called Gethsemane. It was a garden, the Mount of Olives. He said to them, Pray. That you may not enter temptation. Verse 41. And he withdrew himself from them about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and he began to pray. Saying, Father, if it is your will, let take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. He was battling his human nature. Amen. But his divine nature had dominion. Then an angel appeared to him. From heaven strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then he sweat. His sweat became like great drops of blood 
falling down on the ground. This is Jesus shed his own blood first. When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Again, we see here that this is where the restoration that was lost in the Garden of Eden, of Garden of Eden was being restored in the Garden of Gethsemane. From that point on, he went to the cross, went to hell, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, ascended, hung out for 40 days, commanded them to come and get and wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power that would bring them a dominion and authority, that would give them the keys that they can overcome everything of this world. And he left and he said, listen, now I'm going to be interceding for you. I'm going to be at the right hand of the Father. I'm going to be praying for you. Even though that the enemy is going to come and try and sift you. He's going to try and come and curse you, put sickness on you. He's going to try and do all kinds of things to you. But I'm telling you, activate the keys. I'm with you. Every time you activate the keys, I'm moving on your behalf. Oh, glory. Mark 16. Then one more scripture. Is everybody okay? Activating your authority. Listen, if the, remember the first thing the enemy comes to steal is your identity. He comes to compromise who you are. And the reason why he gets, a, gets access to that compromise is because people are not activating enough. Mark 16, verse 16. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? And he who what? He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be what? What's the word believe mean? Follow. And these signs will follow those who follow. In my name they are what? Cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Why? Because they've been baptized with the power of the Father, with His Spirit, and they got a new language. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will what? Recover. Believe me, I lay hands on myself. I say, Lord, these are your hands. Do something with this head. I exchange my thoughts for your thoughts. I exchange my sicknesses, disease, and flus, and viruses for your stripes and healing. Why? We always go back to the cross because that's where the exchange was made. Amen? And I'm going to close at Matthew 25. Use your weapons. What are they? Keys. Activate them. And be a first striker. Don't wait to get attacked. Matthew 25, glory. Verse, oh, 21. 25, 21. His Lord said to him, well done, good and what? Faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Faithful servants are ones that activate the keys. If you're faithful... Why? Because if, you if you're an individual that's activating the keys all the time, taking your authority and dominion, can he trust you? Then he's going to make you a ruler over many. But if you can't be trusted in the little, can he trust you in the more? Amen. Don't be distracted. Don't be misled. Don't let your emotions, feeling, and everything else that's bothering you, just get rid of it. Walk away from it. 
Don't battle it in your mind. You'll lose. It's got to come out of your mouth. That's where the power of death and life is in your mouth, not in your thoughts. It's not in your checkbook. Amen? It's not in your physical strength. It's in the power of the Spirit because you and I are in a war of the Spirit, not of the flesh. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you'll constantly quicken us to activate. And Lord, baptize afresh each and every one in this room. Give a thirst and hunger that they may come to you and get filled with the Spirit of God, with fire, with power and dominion and authority to drive out all attacks of the enemy and make a place for you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.